My name is Sharon Anyango and I am a teaching fellow at FASOS, uh, mostly in the Global Studies program, but also sometimes at UCM and also European Studies. I chose the book Silent Spring by Rachel Carson because it's a very influential book when it comes to global environmental movements. So my favorite part of the book is the introduction, A Fable for Tomorrow, and it states, there was once a town in the heart of America where all life seemed to live in harmony with its surroundings. The town lay in the midst of a checkerboard of prosperous farms with fields of grain and hillsides of orchards where in spring, white clouds of bloom drifted above the green fields. Then, a strange blight crept over the area and everything began to change. Farmers complained of much illness among their families and doctors were puzzled by the new kinds of sickness appearing amongst their patients. There was a strange illness. The birds, for example, where had they gone? Many people spoke of them, puzzled and disturbed. It was a spring without voices. So the author of this book is Rachel Carson. She was an American environmentalist, marine biologist, as well as conservationist, whose work has been very influential when it comes to global environmental movements. The book Silent Spring documents the use of uh, pesticides, especially DDT, and how these pesticides have an impact on the environment. So DDT was used mainly during uh, World War II, and uh, it was used to spray crops as well as to prevent soldiers from contracting insect-borne diseases. But the issue with DDT is that it does not dissolve in water. And uh, Carson argued that once these pesticides found their way into the biosphere, it had an impact on human health, uh, insects, it killed birds, as well as plants. So when spring comes, there's no life. So we use the book in the tutorial to talk about global environmentalism movement, even though Rachel Carson was credited with, uh, with uh, starring the pot on environmentalism. In the tutorials, we, we also look at the global south because global environmental movements also existed um, in non-Western countries. And uh, for instance, in India, we, uh, there's the Gandhi's philosophical thought of ahimsa, so that means uh, coexisting with nature. And in South Africa, there's also the philosophy of Ubuntu, so togetherness, uh, not just with humans, but also with nature. So in the tutorials, we use it to show um, the en different environmental uh, thoughts or movements that existed both in the global south and in the global north. My ideal world of living together with nature is coexistence because uh, if we do not take care of nature, nature is definitely not going to take care of us.